guys this is no code limits here and in this video we are going to see some more problems of snakeify and this is our lecture number two and let's move towards our browser so today we are going to solve uh, second part of the problems in that we are going to see integer numbers and code numbers so you can also side by side code along with me so if you feel this video really helps you you can keep supporting me for making these type of videos further and let's start the problem so this is our first problem last and last digit of the int uh, integer so don't worry if you are feeling like these videos are going too hard so these are nothing these are basic problems only these problems can help you to make your logical skills increasing so let's copy this problem and move toward the one notebook so this is a problem we have so we have to find its uh, last digit for example if you have a number like this one seven nine so this is its one digit this is its tens digit and this is its hundreds digit so we have to find this last digit this ones digit so how we can find so uh, if you remember like i have told you about the modulus operator in the previous lecture so basically this gives us the reminder and that reminder is nothing but that uh, last digit so this modulus uh, operator gives us a reminder yeah so let's see this problem so first of all let's see its test cases and all so we will have test cases 179 so if we do modulus of this we would be able to find its uh, last digit so we would be solving this problem here only okay so first of all we have to take input from the user so I will make a variable name a and I would convert it into integer using an int function and this is a logic for taking input from the user as an integer type so next we would do what we would print and whatever uh, number we are getting here like the value of a we would uh, do modulus of it uh, with uh, like uh, with 10 so we would be able to find its last digit so let's run the code so here we are getting its output like as 9 so we will check our solution for all the test cases so boom here guys we are seeing like our solution is working for all test cases okay so before moving towards more problem i want to tell you like if we have to find tens digit how we can find so basically we have two methods so first of all we will see method number one so as i have told you uh, how to find like uh, ones digit so if you don't uh, don't get it previously i will told you again this so first of all I, we would see like if we have to find uh, the ones digit how we can find so for ones digit we can simply whatever number we have we would do its modulus with 10 so we would be able to find its uh, last digit so I would show you here like we have 1 7 9 so modulus always returns the integer number and if we di uh, divide it with 10 so we know like 10 into 17 is 1 70 and we have reminder as remaining 9 so this is the number that we required so this is the last digit so this is our answer for the first question so like this we can find one digit and for finding the tens digit tens digit first of all we have to uh, find its uh, what we can say 
see here for example if you have number like this one seven nine so we have to find its tenth digit so we know its tenth digit is this so if we have to find this we would simply divide it uh, first of all uh, we can also divide it simply with hundred so hundred into one is hundred so we have remaining 79 so what uh, first of all we are finding its modulus and whatever remind modulus returns uh, the number reminder last digits so this last digits we would divide again with 10 so we would uh, first of all do modulus whatever number number we are getting would firstly we are doing its modulus and then we are dividing it with 10 so this 79 we are getting here we would divide it with 10 so 10 into 7 we get 70 and then uh, we are getting a reminder as 9 so this value which we are getting here as quotient so basically if we divide something uh, with the number so whatever quotient we get it will return its quotient so that's it like uh, this way we can find uh, the tenth digit of the number and if we have to find uh, we, we can say on uh, hundreds digit so for finding hundreds digit uh, we have to instead of 100 we have to uh, do the mod uh, modulus of number with 1000 modulus with 1000 and we can see here so like same in our case as we have 179 and we would first do uh, modulus with 1000 any big number we can take suppose this one so we know like thousand into one is what thousand and if we subtract something zero into uh, we would getting re uh, remaining as uh, here zero this here nine and here seven 790 remains so this 719 again we have to uh, divide with which number we have to divide it with uh, this remainder which uh, which we are getting here we have to divide it with uh, we can say uh, let's divide it with uh, 100 so 100 into 7 is what 700 so so from here we can get its reminder as 90 so this 7 which we are getting as quotient as I have told you that if we divide something with any number we are getting its quotient as our answer so this is the same we have to divide uh, here with 100 for finding 100 uh, the value of a digit so like this we can able to find its 100 digit so let's code it yeah so first of all uh, so this is our first problem so let's move to our second problem uh, firstly read it read this problem yeah so let's paste it here and this problem states like uh, we have a given number and of that given number we have to print its tens digit so as I have told you if I have to print its tens digit number for example if I have this number so this this is going to become my tens digit and I have to find this so I how I can find it so firstly I have to do modulus of this number with 100 
and then simply divide that number with 10 so like this I can able to find its 10 digits so let's code it so see here I would delete all this code first of all I would uh, so see here this is my input and I have to print 7 as my output so first of all I would take integer input from the user and then simply use print function and in print function I would firstly uh, find the modulus with 100 and then simply do what I would simply divide it with 10 so as I would run this I would get this 73.3 yeah so uh, again this number which I am getting here I would convert it into an teacher so if I again run it so I know I am getting 7 as in my output so as we know like if we are getting answer in float number we can convert it into integer so the floating point number will be neglected in our output so let's check our solution so we are getting our solution is working for all the test cases so let's move towards the next problem statement some of the digits so this problem statement let's copy it from here and paste it here so here what this what is the problem statement saying like we have a given three digit number so what are these three digit number so we have this 179 179 and we have to print its answer as 17 uh, this is our input 179 and this is our output 117 so if we add these numbers individually as we you can see 1 plus 7 plus 9 so here 1 plus 7 is 8 8 plus 9 is what this is nothing but this is 17 so we are getting our correct answer as this so how I can code this see so first of all I would take uh, input from the user this whole number and then I would find its one digit then I would find its uh, tens digit and then hundred digit so simply I can uh, do this and I can be able to find its sum so I would be making three variables like a b and c and I would assign this one uh, digit value to a and then tens digit value to b and 100 digit value to C so like this we can be able to find so let's code it so first of all I would take a number input so I would take a number and I would take input from the user so I would make three variables a and I would find these this number which you are having here as an input for our test case so I would firstly find its one digit and then ten digit and then hundred digit. So I can able to find its uh, one digit. So firstly, uh, like the uh, formula for it, we have to uh, do modulus of the number with ten. So I would be able to find this uh, one digit. So one digit value would be assigned to my variable a, and then again uh, I would find the ten digit value. So whatever number I have, I would simply uh, divide it with 10 and then uh, simply if I would do modulus of it uh, I am yeah so I would do modulus with 10 I would be able to find its 10 uh, tens digit so let's find the 100 digit so for 100 digit simply do what whatever num we have and we would do its uh, float division with 100 so if I would print its sum so a plus b plus c it's like individually values of this number I have assigned to the numbers so we would be able to calculate all these values and see here what result we would get here 17 so like if we check our solution for all the test cases see here it is working for all the test cases so here uh, there might be some students like who would be fascinated like 
we are doing number floor division of 10 so see here if we are doing some some number an integer number it's uh, if we are doing its flow so it would return as largest integer but not integer greater than x so what i mean to say by this see here i would open my notebook see yeah so what uh, actually i want to say here so yeah i would change it to yeah so if i am saying something so what does it mean like i am saying like uh, it would uh, if we do some any digit flow uh, floor floor division if i would apply floor operator to any digit so this is the floor operator it would return me its uh, value as well I, uh, example if i would take here if i number as 23.23.11 so its floor division if i would find so it would return me as answer as 24 so why basically this returns us an integer value which is greater than suppose this is my actual x value this is my actual x this floor division returns me the value which is uh, greater than this x value so as our x is 23.11 and its greater value is basically what 24 so this would return me this result so yeah so how we are converting here yeah here you can see like i'm whatever number i have i would i am dividing its uh, uh, this number with 10 and then uh, i am finding its modulus so basically uh, by doing like this um, uh, i mean to say like as i have number like this uh, 179 and i have to find its uh, hundreds digit so i am doing what i am doing dividing it so with 10 so 179 so if i would uh, multiply 10 with 17 i would be getting something as 170 and this 9 would be remainder so yeah so this is my ones digit and this is my i mean to say what quotient and this quotient would return me if i would apply this floor operator in between the number uh, with 10 in between the 10 and the actual number so if I would again find its modulus so modulus turns me as I told you it uh, the whatever reminder we got here it would be our this would be our reminder in uh, here in this case in if we do any number modulus then it's it would return me its last digit so this number last digit is this 9 so here you can see in this last digit is 9 and whatever quotient we are getting here if i would uh, again divide it with 10 so for example 10 into 1 we would get here what 7 as if we subtract 10 by uh, 17 by 10 we are getting here 7 as reminder so this only reminder which we are getting here this is our uh, tens value so like this we can able to find tens value so i, I hope you would be getting like um, whatever logic i have applied here like whatever num i have so same i have done here like 79 in my case and then i am dividing it with what 10 and then i am finding its modulus so like whatever uh, if i would divide it i have to consider this quotient and whatever quotient i have i would be simply doing modulus with it uh, with 10 so here you can see i am doing its modulus with 10 so i would be able to find its tens value so yeah that's it uh, like here you can see our solution uh, we are getting here 17 and our solution is working for all the test cases so let's move toward the next problem statement so next problem statement is basically uh, what uh, we have a given real positive number and we have to print its fractional part so let's first of all copy this problem and then paste it here in the one notebook and this is the problem number which problem number is this uh, one two three four this is fourth problem number yeah so we have a real positive number so see here this is our uh, input 
then we have to print its fractional part for example if we are having this number 179.9 so we know like its fraction number is what 0.9 so we have to print this 0.9 if we add 0 before the point so this means same 0.9 we have to print this so see here if I would uh, simply uh, uh, for, for example if I take input from the user for example I would take n as input from the user so this input would be in floating point number so here you can see like I am getting in points my input so I would use floor I would use it float and then simply use input function here and then I would simply do what here I would whatever I would use a print statement and if I would simply print this and I would be getting this the, this same number whatever actually uh, we have a user has entered so what if we have to find its fractional part so if I divide this number which are, which is floating with integer number so we are we know like its integer number is what 17 if instead of this floating point float function if I would use a 17 then this value would be separated as only 17 so what happen if I uh, subtract uh, this number whole number 17.9 from 17 uh, sorry yeah if I would subtract it from 17 so I would be getting an uh, answer as 0 0.9 so here is 0 nothing we can add 0 so if I would convert this n into integer so like this we are doing we can be able to do type casting so if I would do this then I would be able to find this fractional part so only this we have to do so let's move uh, towards Snackify and code it so I would be yeah okay I would remove this all the stuff and then first of all I would take a number input from the user and see here I would be taking a floating point number input from the user I would add here input function and then simply uh, print adding print statement here and whatever number we are getting input from the user I would subtract it with uh, type casting doing the actual number num into integer if I subtract this from the integer number I would be able to print my floating point number here so if I run here run this I would be getting 0 0.89 which is approximately uh, equal to 9 so if I check my solution for all the test cases so it is working for all the test cases so I am getting here congratulations message and let's move toward the next problem statement so in this problem statement we have to find first and uh, after uh, first digit after the decimal point so let's see what this problem statement want to say to us so I would copy this and paste it in my one notebook so here it means to say we have a given positive number a real positive number and we have to print it first digit to the right to the decimal point for example we have here input as 1.7 uh, 1.79 so see here 1.79 so this number which is next to the point we have to print this so this is similar to as we are finding tens digit uh, in our previous questions so we have to simply do what we have to multiply it with ten. so if we multiply this number with 10 so I would get something like this if I would convert it I would add 100 instead of uh, representing like this and I would multiply it with 10 so this 0 and this 0 would be decuted so what we, I would get 7.9 so if I would apply uh, the formula which uh, we were considering previously if I would find this number modulus with 10 I would be getting last digit so I would be getting a 7 so same logic we would apply in the code so let's see so I would remove as I have removed all the stuff from here 
so let's take input from the user and this input would be our uh, input in floating point number and I would take a variable name and and using float function I would be converting my uh, input into float point number and then simply using input function and with that input function I would be able to uh, take input from the user and then simply use print statement here and in that print statement whatever number user is entering I would be simply doing its uh, multiplying with 10 and then find it uh, then doing its modulus with 10 I would be able to find uh, its digit which is next to the point is 7 so I have also uh, I uh, there is one thing uh, that I have to do here more like if I would uh, divide something so I would be getting some flight floating point number so I have to convert that floating point number into integer so if I run this I would be getting 7 so uh, this is the actual input that we would need so if I would check my solution for all the test cases see here my test case is working for all uh, my code is working for all the test cases so my solution is right so now let's move toward the next problem statement so see here this problem statement is also um, very straightforward so I would be copying this problem statement so see here this problem statement uh, I guess has, is very tricky so this is a good problem statement so see here our program gets two number n and m input from the user so I would take n and m input from the user and then simply basically uh, here you can read this a car can con uh, cover distance of n kilometers per day so whatever this n distance which user would enter our car would cover distance of n kilometers in one day so I have to calculate like how many days it will uh, take to cover a root of length m kilometers so I have to find this like in one day how many kilometer uh, this uh, m is also uh, given to the user so I have to simply divide whatever uh, we have this m kilometers with this actual n kilometers so I would be able to find like uh, how many days it uh, in how many days uh, my car will cover m, m kilometers so let's um, move towards the snake if I and uh, do this so see here like first of all I would take uh, two numbers n and m I would take firstly n and this input from the user and this input number is in of integer type and then I would simply use input function and then take input from the user and then again I would do the same thing for the the number m I would use their input function and then simply using print function if I would divide my m with n m with n so let's first of all see let's see what output it would give us so see here it is giving us one point something so see here so we need to so as I have told you previously like uh, we have floor operator this so this is the important terms that I am to, uh, tolling you and one more is there so we have sealed function in python so uh, that's why python is popular programming language and it is, is too much easy so basically it has bunch of libraries that uh, makes programmers to key code easily so this floor operator as I, I have told you just in um, previous so you can recap it like it is uh, it would return us the largest integer but not greater than that number but if I would use this ceiling point number it would return us the smallest integer but the uh, smallest integer which is greater than or equal to that x so if I would use the ceiling uh, function here so it would return me output as what it would return me as output if I have one point something zero 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 so it would return me something as one or uh, it would be returning me its greater value sorry 
so if I have this number like uh, 1.01792 something so the floor operator is turning me but if it's uh, like if I have 23 0.11 so it would return me only 23 this floor operator if I have 23.11 if I would use seal function so it would turn me as 24 the number greater than the actual value so that is the use of this seal function here so if I would use here like I am getting this number and I have to find its greater number it is almost approximately equal to 2 but I have to uh, make actual correct output so I would use a seal function seal function yeah uh, wait yeah so see here I would use a seal function so why this I can be able to find my output so uh, I have to use here this seal function is inside my math library so I have to use this math.seal so Uh, name math is not defined so I have to import this math library so I would use here import and then math I would run this I am getting here output as 2 so if we would check our solution for all the test cases here my code is working for all the test cases I am getting congratulation message here so let's move toward the next problem statement this is clock this digital clock is basically a problem statement which is mostly very much difficult if you got the actual logic you would be able to solve any of the snacky fry problem so <coughs> let's copy this problem and paste it here and actually this problem what means to say so I have copied this problem so this problem says given an integer and minutes is passed since midnight and how many hours and minutes are displayed on the 24 hour digital clock so the program should print two numbers between 0 to 23 and the numbers of minutes zero to, uh, between 0 and 15 and they have also given here like first of all simply you would see here we have to take an integer and input from the user this is an of type int int so then we have basically this whatever an user is entering here this minute is in this time is in minute so we have to convert this minutes into actual time so as we know like uh, if uh, so like uh, if i have 150 50 minutes so as I know like in one hour there are 60 minutes so in two hours there would be 120 minutes if I would simply multiply 60 with 2 I would be getting uh, 120 and if I would subtract this 50 from 120 I would be getting 30 remain remaining so I can able to say as like this 150 minutes means 2 hours and remaining 30 minutes so yeah so I have to simply print my time as 2 hours and 30 minutes so simply this I have to print so <coughs> yeah I hope you have got the um, whatever we have to do in this problem so let's move toward the sneaky file and solve it so I would remove all this stuff which is not required here and first of all we would do here we would take in uh, number input from the user and 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 this is of type int and I would use input function here so as I have taken input from the user now I would simply do what um, I would convert this minute into hours or for making it converting into hours I would simply uh, take a variable h and then simply use floor, uh, floor operator 
and then divide it with 60 so if I divide my odds uh, whatever actual uh, number in minutes I am getting if I would divide it with 60 I know in uh, one hour there are 60 minutes so I can easily convert it into uh, hours so next thing we have to do for the minutes so I know if I would do uh, whatever actual number we are getting its modulus with 60 I would be able to find its minutes if I would print it then let's see yeah I'm getting my actual output output whatever I required so if I would check my solution for all test cases here it is showing me message correct congratulations so my code is working for all the test cases so no problem so let's move toward the <coughs> next problem statement yeah so next problem statement is about total cost so I would copy this problem and move toward the one notebook and paste it here uh, yeah so let me make it Uh, something yeah so see here a cupcake consists of a and b cents a dollar and b cents so first of all I would take two variables a and b input from the user and then see here I have to buy n cake so I would also take n input from the user and I have to print total cost see here total cost in dollars and cents so I have to first of all I have to check how many dollars and cents I have to pay for buying and cakes so I have to simply find here cost so let's see so if I would see here uh, like uh, first of all let's check the input whatever input we have this is the input uh, we have so yeah paste it here so I have this first number as my dollar I would assume and this as cents and this is my number of cakes so see here I know in one dollar there are hundred cents so in my case there are two dollars so, so I would firstly convert it into whole number into cents or I can simply convert this cents into dollars so making it easy I would convert this dollar into cents so it is quite easy so how many dollars I have two so if I would multiply it with hundred I would be able to convert this into two hundred so this is my two hundred cents and 50 cents after converting it into uh, from dollar to cents I, I got this and now I have to do what I would add this so total cost is what 250 and I am using this 250 for buying n cupcake so n cupcake uh, is of is what is it, its value is 4 if I can uh, multiply 250 with 4 I would be getting something as 1000 cents I am spending for buying 4 cupcakes so I have to print uh, total cost in dollars and cents so I can simply convert it into uh, its cost into dollars and cents for converting this 1000 this is uh, actual cost and if I would convert it into dollars so I can simply do what I can simply uh, Use floor operator and then divide it with 10 I would be able to find uh, its cost and then uh, also one thing we would do here I would use modulus operator here so let's move toward the snakeify and try to do it I would remove this unnecessary stuff from here and see here I would firstly take a which is my cost in 
dollar so I would take it input from the user using input function and then B I would also use input function and then number of cupcakes I would input from the user using input function and then I would find here cost I would make a variable name cost and I would be finding a cost first of all so whatever n cupcakes, uh, cupcakes I have I would multiply it with a uh, hundred uh, as we know like in one dollar there are hundred cents so I would multiply it with uh, a means dollars and then add with cents so I am I would be able to find the to a total cost so it would give me the result as thousand according to my this uh, in, uh, input and now I am going to able to uh, now I would find its cost in dollars and cents I would simply use a print statement and in print statement I would I am using modulus and floor operator for finding its cost so first of all I would use floor operator and simply divide my uh, cost with 10 and then I would use modulus operator here and simply divide my cost with 10 so now let's print the result I'm getting here something as 0 so if I have to find see here guys if I have to find my total cost so I know my total cost is 1000 as I have shown you so if I have to find its cost in dollars so basically I have made a small mistake here instead of this 10 we have to use here 100 so as we know like in one dollar there are 100 cents so I have to divide it with 100 so if I run this again I am getting the my actual input output which I want so if I check my solution for all the test cases see here it is showing me wrong solution okay so basically here for finding the cost we have to also use here 100 now if we run again run this we are getting correct solution so it, our code is also working for all the test cases so now let's move toward the next problem statement so these problem statements are something tricky so try to watch the video again if you are not getting anything I hope I think um, after watching it again you would be able to get it so let's copy this problem statement and paste it here so in this problem statement I have basically H hours, minutes, and seconds. So I have to determine the angle. Yes. So, so this problem statement is something uh, that I have re, uh, already solved in lead code pro, uh, lead code platform. So um, see here. If I have to find, if I have time given in hours, minute, and seconds. For example, here in my case, I have time given as 1 2 and 6 1 2 and 6 see here yeah same this is the same yeah so 1 represents as hours and this 2 represents as minute and 6 represents as seconds so basically what here we have to find we have to find its angle so uh, as we know like this is our analog clock and we know here is 12 here is 6 and here is something 3 and here is something 9 and here is something 1 here is something 2 if I have to find the angle between so in clock one hand of clock is for hours and one is for minutes and one is for seconds so if I have to find the angle of um, uh, if my uh, clock hand is at 2 so I have to find its angle so in my case uh, right now it is at 1 so if, if I have to find my angle between uh, 12 and 1 so basically it if you can check it using protector you can able to see like this angle is something as 30 degree so uh, if I can say how this is 30 degree so see here this whole circle like it is one revolution of the whole uh, clock is of 360 degree 
so we know like there are 12 hours are required for taking a whole revolution of the clock so whole revolution is of 360 degree so if I have to find one hour angle from this so I can divide this 360 degree with 12 I would be getting something as 30 so this 30 is the angle between one hour so if I uh, I have to find angle between 5 minutes so see here if I have to find something angle between 5 minutes then I have to do what I can again use this protector I would be able to see here like once uh, in one minute my second hand has to take 360 revolution so for this I would use here something like whatever time I, I am having here in minute I would be multiplying it with 30 I know like for uh, taking uh, complete revolution its angle is 30 degree and I would be dividing it with 60 so basically uh, in minutes uh, there are 60 seconds so I would be able to find minutes from here minutes angle from here and if I have to find seconds angle then I instead of this 60 I know in one hour there are 3600 seconds I would be simply dividing it with, uh, instead of the 60 I would be writing here as 3600 uh, so s all these we have to add and then we would be able to find the correct angle so we have to do the same thing so let's code it first of all I would remove this all the stuff and I would be taking input from the user as for hours and input using input function I would be able to take input from the user and next I would take input from 4 minutes using int I would be type casting nesting value to integer and after that I would be taking input for from the user for seconds and then I would use a int function and using input I would be able to take both the inputs from the user I would simply do a user print statement and as I have told you like what are hours we have given here if I have to find its angle then I would be able to, I have to multiply it with 30 I would be able to get my angle so whatever hours would make an angle so if I have to find minutes angle then I have to simply multiply it with 30 and then divide it with 60 so I know in one minute there are 60 seconds so if I have to find the angle between the seconds then I have to multiply it with 30 and then divide it with like how many seconds are there in hours so with the total seconds I have to multiply it and divide by it so if I run this solution I am getting this 31.05 if I check my solution for all the test cases see here I am getting my solution as correct so my code is also working for all the test cases so basically this problem is too much tricky if you don't get it please watch the video again you would be able to get it correctly see here so last and the fi uh, problem of uh, today's tutorial see here I would copy this problem and I would be pasting here in the one notebook so basically here we have to find angle by which the minute hand turns since the start of the current hour so as this is my clock so sorry for the bad, that bad handwriting so as I have started using this one notebook newly so forgive me for that so using uh, here you can see this uh, problem statement says her hand had turned by alpha degrees uh, by the, since the midnight and determined the angle by which minute had turned since the start of the current hour and we have to print the input and output in this problem using floating numbers so I would be taking input uh, from the user for the minutes so this is uh, input is in floating point number we would simply use our float, func uh, float function uh, using this I can be able to convert my string input into float and then I have to find the angle of uh, by which minute had turned into so first of all this hand would be in my minutes and I have to find like if I, I am in suppose this is my 2 I am at 2 o'clock and something as 20 minutes 
I am at two hours and twenty minutes. So I have to find this angle. So how I can able to find whatever and like user is entering, I have to simply uh, doing uh, do what I have to simply uh, like I I I have two methods here. I know like whatever user is entering, I have to simply uh, as I am doing previously. Uh, for uh, finding the angles uh, in one hour, I'm multiplying it with thirty. So in this case, we are have to find this distance. Like if uh, it is going there, like what angle it would make, and we have to convert that into into floating point number. So for that, we have to simply divide it with thirty, and for that, we would use our modulus operator, and then simply multiply with twelve. So we know, like uh, in one revolution, we have twelve hours in a t in clock. So simply this thing we would apply in the code. So let's code it and see what it gives us in out. So I would take input from the user as alpha. So here in this case, they have said as like we have to take alpha degrees. So I would use a variable as alpha in equal to I would be taking floating point number as an input. So using input function, I can able to take input, and then using print statement, whatever alpha we are getting here, I would be simply using modulus operator and dividing it with thirty. And if I would multiply this with thirty, uh, sorry for uh, multiplying it with twelve, I would be able to find its Floating point number. So as I know, like in co uh, in one revolution, there are twelve digits in the clock, like from one to twelve. So it would uh, there are twelve hours shown uh, in the clock. So see here, uh, like this is a clock, and here is something twelve. So like from here, it uh, our clock starts. And till end on the twelve. So there are m m uh, almost twelve digits which uh, which is shown on the clock. So so I have in the video I have said like uh, there are twelve hours, but there are uh, uh, as we know there are twenty four hours in the clock. So basically we have numbers only from one to twelve. So it would repeat it uh, uh, if it completes its one revolution. So let's run our code. So what output we are getting? One twenty. So it is correct according to our solution which we want. So if I would check my solution for all the test cases, my uh, code is working for all the test cases. So that's it for this video. If you feel like uh, this video solves some of the uh, questions which you have in your mind regarding Snakeify, so then please keep supporting and uh, subs uh, subscribe. Uh, my YouTube channel, and you, I, uh, I would be trying to give you more and more uh, useful content within short period of time. So, as you know, like this video is going too long. So, uh, for making you better understanding, I am making that by uh, this video is too long. So, till then, keep learning. Bye bye.